Hello again, boys and girls. Well, so far, our main character, Trisha, has managed to start kindergarten, and now she's all the way up to fifth grade, and she still can't read properly. And I think she's finding life very, very difficult because she has no friends, and the kids in the class tease her. But her new teacher, Mr. Falker, seems to be very kind. Let's see what happens, because remember, the title of this book is Thank You, Mr. Falker. But one day at recess, Eric followed her to her secret hiding place. Have you become a mole? He laughed, and he pulled her out into the hall and danced around her. Dumbbell, dumbbell, maggoty old dumbbell. Trisha buried her head in her arms and curled up in the ball. Suddenly she heard footsteps. It was Mr. Falker. He marched Eric down to the office. When he came back, he found Trisha. I don't think you'll have to worry about that boy again, he said softly. What was he teasing you about, little one? I, I don't know, Trisha shrugged. Trisha was sure Mr. Falker believed that she could read. She had learned to memorize what the kid next to her was reading, or she would wait for Mr. Falker to help her with a sentence then she'd say the same thing that he did. Good, he would say. Then one day, Mr. Falker asked her to stay after school and help wash the blackboards. He put on music and brought out little sandwiches as they worked and talked. All at once he said, let's play a game. I'll shout out letters. You write them on the board with the wet sponge as quickly as you can. A, he shouted. She wiped a watery A. Eight, he shouted. She made a watery eight. Fourteen, three, D, M, Q, he shouted out. He shouted out many, many letters and numbers. Then he walked up behind her, and together they looked at the board. It was a watery mess. Trisha knew that none of the letters or numbers looked like they should. She threw the sponge down and tried to run. But Mr. Falker caught her arm and sank to his knees in front of her. You poor baby, he said. You think you're dumb, don't you? How awful for you to be so lonely and afraid. She sobbed. But... Little one, don't you understand? You don't see letters or numbers the way other people do. And you've gotten through school all this time and fooled many, many good teachers. He smiled at her. That took cunning and smartness and such, such bravery. Then he stood up, finished washing the board. We're going to change all that, girl. You're going to read. I promise you that. Now, almost every day after school, she met with Mr. Falker and Miss Plessy, a reading teacher. They did a lot of things she didn't even understand. At first, she made circles in sand and then big sponge circles on the blackboard going from left to right, left to right. Another day, they flicked letters on a screen and Trisha shouted them out loud. Still other days, she worked with wooden blocks and built words. Letters, letters, letters. Words, words, words. Always sounding them out. And that felt good. But though she'd read words, she hadn't read a whole sentence. And deep down, she still felt dumb. And then one spring day, had it been three months or four months since they had started? Mr. Falker put a book in front of her. She'd never seen it before. He picked a paragraph in the middle of the page and pointed at it. Almost as if it were magic or as if a light poured into her brain, the words and sentences started to take shape on the page as they never had before. She marched them 
off to slowly she read a sentence and then another and another and finally she'd read a paragraph and she understood the whole thing she didn't notice that mr falker and miss plessy had tears in their eyes that night trisha ran home without stopping to catch her breath she bounded up the front steps threw open her front door and ran through the dining room to the kitchen she climbed up on the cupboard and grabbed a jar of honey then she went into the living room and found the book on a shelf the very book that her grandpa had shown her so many years ago she spooned honey on the cover and tasted the sweetness and said to herself the honey is sweet and so is knowledge but knowledge is like a bee who made the honey it has to be chased through the pages of a book then she held the book honey and all close to her chest she could feel tears roll down her cheeks but they weren't tears of sadness she was happy so very happy the rest of the year became an odyssey of discovery and adventure for the little girl she learned to love school i know because that little girl was me patricia polacco i saw mr falker again some 30 years later at a wedding i walked up to him and introduced myself at first, he had difficulty placing me. Then I told him who I was and how he had changed my life so many years ago. He hugged me and asked me what I did for a living. Why, Mr. Falker, I answered. I make books for children. Thank you, Mr. Falker. Thank you.